Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to Logic 10.4.5. I'm going to start off by looking at the new DSer 2 plugin, a fantastic new tool with some great improvements for DSing and removing sibilants from vocal and dialogue tracks. Now, the new thing here, aside from the interface, is the we have relative mode. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. But let me start with absolute, which is more the traditional way that we think of working with a DSer. So it starts processing at an absolute input level, and the detection level is derived from the incoming signal. And we set the threshold to set the absolute value of when it's going to start kicking in. And then we can set the reduction by this knob or by moving this blue line here. And we can center it around this frequency. We have different filters, and we can use split or wide band for the detection. And we can solo it here to see what we're zeroing in on. And that's kind of the traditional way of working with DSing. And let me start by playing you a little voiceover that I have here of myself with some pronounced S's. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass, which so you can hear there's some sibilance happening. So let's approach it traditionally by putting this on and adjusting the threshold. The input signal, first I'll set the filter and zero in where we need to be. The input signal is split somewhere around there. Two level detectors measure the level of the high pass signal so and the full bandwidth. we can see it kicking in when it crosses the line and it turns to yellow. We can see it starting to work. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass, which combined perfectly to full bandwidth. So that sounds pretty good. The input signal, the input signal is split into two. So that's the traditional way. Now let's look at relative mode. The processing starts around a fixed threshold level in this mode, and it might be lower or higher than where we have this set. So the thing that we want to do is adjust this till it's just triggering, and then in the background, automatically, changes in level get detected, and the threshold is invisibly adjusted to accommodate quieter or louder S's. So the threshold is still relevant here. Because even though it works on lower or higher levels, we need to set it to get the starting point. So it's kind of like having a compressor on the threshold, writing the threshold level based on the audio. So based on where you start the threshold, if the level goes up from there, it'll raise it automatically so that it's not clamping down more than you want. So again, let's adjust it so it's just kicking in. The input signal is split. In and I find you need much less because you just need to get it triggering the way you want. And after that, Differences in the level of the S's will be compensated for automatically. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass, which combined perfectly to full bandwidth. Two level detectors measure the level of the high pass. So that works nicely. Now I've saved a couple of presets. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, I like it fairly closed because you don't need it to trigger much. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass. So it's even more subtle. And here's an absolute mode. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass. Which So here I have it triggering just a little bit, but I'm clamping down a lot. But look and listen to the difference when the yellow line moves up to about here versus when it just crosses the threshold. The input signal is split into two frequency bands, a low pass and a high pass, which whereas in relative mode that would all be compensated for and get de-assed the same amount. Let's look at another example. Here's a male vocal without any de-assing. Hey girl, this is what you get with me. A big bright summer of possibility. We'll take a drive and see where we arrive. So we got some S's happening there. So here I've got a preset set. And again, I'm not doing anything unusual here. It's working the way we normally do. I kind of like the split band and this shelving filter mode best for the way I'm using it. Here it is soloed. Hey girl, this is what you get with me. So I'm really zeroing in on it around there. And let's listen. Hey girl, this is what you get with me. A big bright summer of possibility. We'll take a drive and see where we arrive. So I'm just reducing a little bit here and it's working nicely. Now let's look at relative mode. So remember, we set the threshold so it's triggering how we want, just like an absolute mode, but then it reacts dynamically to the levels. 
So if there's an S that's quieter or louder, it'll adjust. So we don't need as much threshold settings. We do in absolute mode. Once it's triggering, we just kind of set it and forget it. And I find that around four o'clock, five o'clock generally works well in relative mode. And here again, I'm not reducing too much and I've raised the frequency a bit, but it's the same general area. Hey girl, this is what you get with me. A big bright summer of possibility. We'll take a drive and see. I find it much smoother in that the DSing is more consistent. Let's look at another example. Here's a female vocal with this bypass. The fading sun set my shadows free. Now here, I've used the wide band. I find it a little more effective in this case. And let's listen to where it's triggering. So it's really grabbing those S's. The fading sun set my shadows free. Sounds pretty nice. I have the threshold set, so it's just crossing it when it needs to, and I'm reducing that amount. That's what sounds good to me. But let's look at the relative mode setting now. Again, the threshold is set here very conservatively, so it's just triggering, and then I can just forget about it, and the rest of the adjustments will take place in the background. The fading sun set my shadows free. So very smooth. ds 2 check it out. In other plugin news, the Expander has a makeover with a new modern look, and the only new features are some additional output clipping modes. And Sculpture has gotten a makeover as well and is now optimized for retina display with a scalable interface, so everything's a lot more clearer to see and work with. We'll continue with more in the next video.